let us briefly discuss what it means to be a good hash function versus, versus a bad hash function. Here are some examples of some really bad hash functions. These hash functions are of the modular type, and the first one we've chosen there is taking our key, multiplying by 5, and finding its mod 100. With this hash function, the problem that's going to happen is that every single output here will either be 0, 5, 10, up until 995. You have only multiples of 5. How do, could we have known that's true? The problem is that the GCD between 5 and 1000 is 5. So that's the case. Similarly, our next example is going to give us only multiples of 3. 0, 3, 6, up until 330. And this will happen because the GCD between 6 and 33 is 3. So if these are bad choices, so what are properties of good hash functions? The first one is that you want every location in the table to be equally likely to be accessed. This is that property that the universal hashing function had. You want that there is a 1 over m probability of accessing every single location. Depending on what you know about your keys, you may be able to do this in various ways. The other thing is that if your keys form some regular pattern, like we saw earlier, like m and then m plus 23, then m plus 46, slightly different than we saw before. But let's say they followed this pattern. You would want that all of those keys get mapped to different locations. Those are the two properties that we really, really want to drive home in any hash function that we choose. So we'll have to keep that in mind whenever we're talking about how we would use these various things. Let's begin actually looking at an example of how these things work. I'm going to give us a hash table. Here we have a totally empty hash table and we're gonna have some hash function with it. Let's choose a totally simple one for this example and assume h of k is equal to k mod m. That is the simplest hash function we can really come up with. And let's start doing some insertions. Let's say we wanted to insert five comma, let's call it D1 just for the first data. I don't care what the data type is. I'm just gonna assume that I'm so inputting the key five with some arbitrary data D1. In order to do that, I need to compute H of five, which is five mod eight, which is five. So over here at location five, I would insert the key value pair five comma D1. Now let's say we inserted 11 comma d2, we would have h of 11 is 11 mod 8, which will give us 3, the remainder when you divide 11 by 8. So at location 3, we input 11 comma d2. Now let's suppose that we did an insert of 12 comma d3. This will give us h of 12, which is going to be one more than the previous one, so this will give me 4. So I get 12, comma d4. Now suppose we did insert 21, d4. h of 21 is 21 mod 8. The modulus when I divide 21 by 8 is 5. So I get, oh no, something bad happens. Because now what I want to do is I want to write 21 comma D4 in the same location as five. So this means my hash table broke, right? Not, not quite actually. So we have ways of dealing with this. We call this a collision. And there are potential ways to resolve this. Before we talk about the ways to resolve it though, let's understand that this was guaranteed to happen. So even if my keys are only integers, no matter what in my 32-bit machine, my integers can be as large as 32-bit integers. It would be totally ridiculous to make a hash table of size 2 to the 32. We do not want our hash tables to be so large, so no matter what, if we had a hash table
of size m. And we examined m plus 1 integers for different potential keys. We would guaranteed get that at least one of those in pairs of integers hit the same location. This is by the pigeonhole principle. So this is an unavoidable problem of this occurrence. In fact, this is effectively by design of hash tables. One of the goals of hash tables is that you have your big universe of keys and you want to squish those down into some narrow range of integers 0 to m minus 1. This is for convenience to make them easier to look up later. But by necessity of squeezing them down, we're going to result in collisions. So we must come up with some way of resolving this issue. There are a couple of ways we could do this. One idea might be, why not just also add it to that location? So we add on 21, d4 into that same location. That is a very reasonable way we could do this. So instead of storing just one key value pair in the location, maybe we potentially store several. This is what we will call chained hashing. An alternative solution might be, oh crap, that solution is occupied. Why not fill, for example, just some other location? Let's say we just moved it over here instead. And then we have some way of deciding that we would move it from location 5 over to location 1. This is an alternative method of doing it, and this will be what we will call open address hashing. We will discuss both of these in detail and talk about the implementations of those two ideas with these hash tables.